hated this thing. <laughs> I hated this movie. I would not have watched this movie on my own. I would have stopped it. I mean, you know, but that... Even if I kind of fast forward to find some highlights now. That's the deal, though, right? Like, that's that's what we put ourselves in with this... Whatever we're doing is we've got to write it out, you know? I know, and I hated it. I'm genuinely surprised you kept that shit in the hat. <laughs> well, you were so excited about just the name, <laughs> old boy. <laughs> old boy, yeah. Um, You're intrigued. And, and that... Oh, I'm sorry, old man. Who gives a fuck? F- fuck this movie. <laughs> the watch end. old boy. And watch the original old boy, not the Spike Lee joint version. But that's still better than this. Hey, guys. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Okay. I gotta get this over with. <laughs> yeah. I just fucking hate this thing. <laughs> but but one of the things that you, that you found most intriguing about this initially when we yeah. were first uh, viewing uh, Suburban Sasquatch is the description I believe on the back of the box for mm-hmm. old man? Sure. If you share will, it with us, please share it with us. What, the, uh, what does this say? This says Michael and Linda Harris have just moved into their beautiful new home, bought for a killer price. <laughs> Linda will soon begin to learn why they were given such a great deal as she begins to discover the dark and evil secrets of its former owner, demented sailor killer Walter Old Man Bowden. Warning: This movie may scare you to death. The other movies don't have a warning. But actually, the the more interesting one was, the, was, IM, it. It was the IMDb well, one. Well, please indulge us. Yeah. Uh, so the IMDb one says... And I, I'll, hate this fucking movie. <laughs> I'll look this up because I don't this want to... This is probably um, the worst one we've watched so far. So I thoroughly that's enjoyed how I, myself. Right. You, so, you did. Yeah. yeah. So, Good, I'm glad. All right. So this... It, the, the IMDb... I might, be, I might burn this Blu-ray, this DVD, after we're done. The, uh, the, I might I might try to find, like, the file <laughs> that is on the actual, like, disc and just, like, delete that part of the movie. You're gonna so, is that possible? Yeah, well, you can rip the DVD and then remove the file for right. Old Man and then, and then just replace the it movie into and, the yeah. package. Oh, oh that's, I might have that's to do some that. high-level shit. That's awesome. So the IMDb... <laughs> Says, which I, now I'm wondering if like you wrote this. <laughs> it says a new couple move in to a house where a murder supposedly took place. Nonsense ensues. Would That's you, uh, that the nonsense ensues yeah. is what really titillated it's, you. I, IMDb, yeah, it's a you know it's a good well, and it, that that like somebody wrote that. And I don't know how that works with IMDb, you know things like it, you know because I mean I'll say this like. During the movie, I looked up the description for uh, Kill Them and Eat Them, mm-hmm. which was also a possibility. Um, and boy, that's something. Like, I don't really ever want to watch that movie, but if we get to it, There's we'll, aliens we'll do in that, it, right? It's it's a horror, thriller, sci-fi, like, there's like five genres on it. Um, but, you know, no, with that said... Um, I definitely don't think this was the worst movie we watched. Not at all. I super, super enjoyed this way more than like Suburban Sasquatch. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It takes all kinds of people to make up a world. <laughs> like um, I said, Suburban Sasquatch had highlight reel yeah, potential. Yeah. I don't know what I could pull from this that would be like a highlight reel. For me, it wasn't a highlight reel thing with this. I think that the actual atmosphere of the film, I think, was creepy partially because... Of that, like, weird, old, like, you know, half-finished, like, full-of-junk house. Like, it, it, that whole thing, maybe it's just, like, a personal point of creepiness for me. But, like, this wood-paneled, like, you know, like, old Boston house with, like, dark corners. And, like, you can just, like, smell the must coming through. But it was half-refurbished. Yeah, Seeing brand sure. new doors and new coat of paint and Yeah, places. sure. But there was just something about, like, this kind of... I think it's partially because we don't have houses like that out here, and I grew up here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's like when I see, like, this, like, wood-paneled house with, like, warped wood and all this stuff, and, like, it just gives me this achy feeling. So that helped um, with the, the whole vibe of it. But see, I, I lived in Minnesota. Right. So I've seen much sure. better examples yeah, totally. of icky homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not... Look, I mean, I, you know, it's still a one and a half star movie, <laughs> you know, but like at the same time. Which is giving it too much credit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we've watched worse bullshit, honestly. And, you know, but hey, it's that, that's 
that's cool. I mean, I'm glad that uh, that we at least got it some kind of enjoyment out of it. You know, like um, that we didn't all just sit there hating our lives. Um, But yeah, I mean, that was the choice. Was we had the choice? I pulled this out of the hat. This disc that had three movies encoded the onto cursed it. Cursed disc. That the this cursed is. disc, and uh, you know, I got to choose between this or kill them and eat them. And I, you know, I don't know if I chose wrong. I think kill them and eat them might have been also insufferable in its own way. Um, but I, it, it, I guess what bothers me is I think there was potential in this movie. I think there was some actual good like. There are things that in this movie that actually kind of got under my skin. Like the first time we saw that like weird faceless ghost thing, um, you know, that kind of yeah, got that to was me. A super cool image. Yeah, I yeah, thought. absolutely. It was an interesting image, yeah. and and I, I mean, I'll, I'll say this now. I mean, it did. I find it ab- absolutely deplorable because this is not my thing. When someone mm-hmm. says, "Let's watch an atmospheric," oh yeah, ghost movie, right. Bye. Well, yeah, totally. Super not my and, thing either, and yet, generally. The Shining was on when I got here. <laughs> right. It's different. Yeah. Which is also a slowly paced. About a ghost, ghost that, like, movie. murdered his family. Right. You know? Right. So that's so, almost apropos that you pulled this. Yeah, right. You know, after watching. I mean, minutes, I guess so it's that. all meant to be. Um, yeah. yeah. The Shining Old Man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, one's know. a clearly better movie yeah. Yeah. i mean there's no one's a master that. filmmaker yeah it? right you know the other one stanley kubrick <laughs> oh, oh. dum dum uh-huh. um, yeah i think that i what i actually found most interesting about this entire experience was the fact that it feels like if you're familiar with harmony corinne's trash humpers that the imagery from Trash Humpers is directly lifted from this this obscure ass, no budget film from 2004. Like, and that's kind of fascinating to me. It's kind of the same old man mask that was, that Adam brought up was used in Jackass. Right. Which also came way after this movie. Right. You know, so like, was it, I mean oh. the, the movie bad bad grandpa oh, I don't know was when way they, after I don't I don't remember when they started using the mask. But I mean was that on the show? I don't know. I mean Jackass goes back to the late nineties, right? On on MTV. Something like that. So I, I Does don't know. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean maybe they had that in there, but like it's not just that. But I mean, first of all, like and you know, if you <laughs> if you care to actually troll anything, I don't know if you're just gonna take this one episode and just dump it forever. <laughs> um, but you know, if you actually do deign to uh, do any editing uh, for this piece of shit, uh, then you can do a side by side and show. Like, I mean, the Harmony Korean Trash Humpers dude looks straight up just like this guy. And there's like this VHS grungy aesthetic with trash humpers as well. So like the fact that, you know, like four years before that movie came this movie, I do find is a little fascinating thing. Um, I don't know, man. Like there was what bothered me. There, it got close in some parts. Like I think that first shot where you saw like the old man and like through the crack of the door, you know, was like actually creepy. Like it actually gave me goosebumps. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they ruin it. Cause right after they show you the old man in, in his entirety, you know, just standing in the corner of a room. And if they would have like held that a little bit, I think that was such like, especially that, was it was kind of a creepy thing but it wasn't creepy if it was just like full lights on the dude standing there um if they would have had that old man image but just like in the corner or like barely a glimpse like you see it just for a second right or if they don't accentuate it with an overbearing score like they did i mean yeah yeah uh, yeah. uh, uh, we've seen all these tricks in many other movies right and I and it's only coming to my head because I watched it recently a few weeks ago. But Hereditary had these cool visual moments where you see like the girl up against the wall, like above, you know, right. like floating in midair. But there's no music, Correct. so it's just the visual that's there to haunt you. Right. It would have been a lot more effective, I think, in if if it wasn't just wrong. Right. Right. You know, and like every time, dude. Even so like much literally strum and drum. You know, for everything. Did okay, you see so, when, like, the phone rang? Like, the phone rang and it went, bah, yeah. like, along with the sound of the phone So, what, what this needs is this this crew that worked on this and 
the Love on a Leash composer, <laughs> and you'd be set. Totally. Then you'd really yeah. have something. Yeah. So are you saying that I should do a fan edit of Old Man no. with all the music no. removed? No. No. Because the music's part of that soundtrack. I, I don't think, think you can remove part it. part of the music removed. I don't think it needs all of the music taken out, but it needs to not be overbearing scary music every gotcha. time something so, scary happens. What if I just put in just a black screen, <laughs> no sound for 120 minutes, right? And did a fan edit that way with Old Man? Hey, Would it be more compelling? On should? the upside, I don't want you to hold back your feelings towards this movie, Adam. <laughs> on the upside, <laughs> this movie was not an hour and 40 minutes long. You know, like think about that, because think about it could have been. It could have been. It, it felt like a week for Adam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also felt that a lot of the actors in this movie were not god awful, um, not on the level of some of the things that we've seen. Um, however, I do feel that like the main dude that was not the like whatever like psychic dude we'll just say with like, you know, without spoiling it. Wait, there's only three um, dudes in the movie. Yeah, there's like, the, the husband, the, the not Boston guy, the the not like you know like psychic dude. Like the husband dude, the husband, okay, the the guy with the shinning, gotcha. Yeah, okay, yeah, that no. Can shin. So like the husband guy was just I couldn't stand that freaking guy. Like he was such a bad actor. Yeah, right. He well, was so terrible. Yeah, and a douche. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's a terrible guy too. And like, what's the more? I mean, what you know? I mean, he you know whatever. Like he gets his and everything. And I guess in a way that's good. Just spoil the movie. Yeah, it's a good point. You're no, never no going to watch this No movie. one is going to watch this episode of well, You and Spew and go seek out this movie as a result. Sean, you, you called it in the first, like, 40 seconds of the movie. I after we read the all the, all the exposition. Yes, at the there, very the, the, did the you guys talk about yes. the exposition when I was in the bathroom? No, no I, all okay, I was okay. saying how much I hated the fucking no. movie is all there, we were talking the, about. The first frame of the movie <laughs> is, is a text describing the history of the movie, you know, like a crawl, you know, in another scene, another movie. It reads really poorly. Yeah. We were, re we paused it and read it, each of us. Yeah. And Josh and I had different takes on what the actual <laughs> movie was because the the sentence structure right. wasn't explicit. It wasn't in what and what it was saying. But that said, I called the twist of the movie based <laughs> on exactly. that the premise that was written at the beginning of the movie. See also Jordan Peele's Us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that happened as well this year. Right. It's, uh, I, I don't understand it. There really didn't even need to be any explanation typed out. I mean, the, the plot explained Correct. itself within five Correct. minutes into this movie. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, couple You're moves right. into a house. Right. Bad shit happened in the house previously, and now... I mean, and to be fair, like, it might have even been, like, a little more interesting if they didn't have that, and maybe, you know, you probably still would have seen that end twist coming a mile away, but you may not have just guessed it, I don't know, before the actual movie even started. Right. Well, because even the, the Shinning guy tells the story again. Yeah. She investigates online on... on the uh, Snoogle? Sn Snoogle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. On a website that looked like it was like a 1994 web or 1995 Geo Cities, website. GeoCities yeah, Angel Fire. You know, right. like in 2004. Right. Like, so obviously. she was reading the whole backstory on the house and the serial killer. Oh, and then the list of serial killers. Who was there? Like Rico but, Suave. Rico Suave. Rico Suave. Gerardo himself. <laughs> Gerardo was there. V Vincent Butts or famous, something. I don't know. Famous there's... serial killer I don't, Gerardo. I don't think any of those names were actual serial killer names. Well, were I saw they? Jeffrey Dahmer. No, was there were some real Jeff, ones yeah. on there. Yeah, John yeah. Wayne like, Gacy. Like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. There was real ones in there for yeah. sure. Which makes me wonder if Rico Suave is an actual serial killer. Now I'm really wonder. Well, because that's just the name of the song. That's not the actual. Correct. Right. Person. Gerardo right. is the singer. Right. Yeah. Rico Suave, rich and smooth. Uh, yeah. That's what a Se serial killer. Killer. Right. Dot, 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 dot. Yeah. Serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, there was a couple of good almost scares in this movie. Like, there was a couple of moments. There was that one moment where she had, like, a dream sequence that it's like you saw the ghost thing. 
there was like I feel that like the quick moment, even though it was a big rip off of Texas Chainsaw Massacre when he like pulls the her woman into the closet, right. I think was a little bit of a good scare. Um, you know, like mm. so I don't think it, it's like the movie isn't completely, in my opinion, complete garbage. Um, and that is that's how low the bar is um, when I see this cover. Yeah, it's it. There's no gore. I don't even yeah. think there's even one drop of blood. Yeah. Uh, not even a smear of blood or even no not even in the in the in the beginning of the movie while the credits are running it shows like the aftermath of the previous crimes you know like the bodies right. covered in body bags and the police tape thrown up wherever they felt like throwing up the police like tape. literally like in a corner in a, it's like they've got the police tape on the front right. door then they have another one like covering the living room, and then there's like in the same room, like right behind it, another police tape. If this DVD was in the room, there would be police tape wrapped around it, right? You know, and it, then you'd open it up, and there'd be more police tape around the disc. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, but so okay, I just thought of something, guys. So okay, but yeah, so, there's no blood. With oh, I was saying the, oh, the yeah, actual yeah, yeah, crime yeah, yeah. scene that happened, there's no blood whatsoever. It shows everybody's hands tied up no bruises no yeah. blood nothing. well they were all strangulations that's because ann even pointed out too i said well maybe they're just strangled good that, point that was his no, thing that's, that's, that he was true. that's a good that point. is true so so in the 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 uh, whatever like the beginning the info dump into thing mm-hmm. we understand the fact that the old man was a serial killer, and then his son found out about it, and then the son was, like, told the police, and then the old man killed the son, okay? I think. That- After binding the son and forcing him right. to watch murders yeah. that he commits... But see, that's so. I guess that wasn't the punishment. Because he heard I voices, think- and he wanted his son to be like him. Right. So long long story short is that the son so basically this this woman you know her husband move into the house there is this guy who's like stalking her and then he's like you can't be in this house there's something dangerous da 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 and she's like how do you know this and he's like i've always known stuff end of the movie you find out he's the ghost of the son who uh, is, like, come back to protect her or something. Right. Now, here's the thing. So, she, like, goes over to his house. So, yeah. did, like, the ghost rent an apartment? Exactly. No, Room number he, six. He addressed it. Oh, he did? Yes, he did. Oh. Because she's like, oh, you live here? He's like, oh, no, not really. I'm just staying here for a little while. Huh, okay. All so, right. So, who does live there? Never mind. Then, you know what? Two stars. Because <laughs> they tied that knot for you. Totally. Yeah. Good. Good attention to detail. Uh, <laughs> okay. I also want to say so. There's like I genuinely because like we we have um, differing opinions. You feel that perhaps that this was something where the composer as it were, of this film, was just like, basically, he had written this music that the director was using, and, you know, Mitch, in the way that maybe a Neil Breen might use, uh, you know, audio network stock songs, music, stock yeah. music, and just slotting it in. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily wrong, except for the fact that there are multiple instances where the main actress seems to be jumping at the music. So literally, like the score will make her jump, and that makes me believe not that the she's reacting to the score, but that the score is reacting to her. Right, and that's why I feel is happening is that the film, you know, the composer was watching the whatever the footage, and it was like, oh, she jumps. Bah, I'm going to add a note here, which so that's the only reason I feel because some of that timing was there's no way that they timed it that perfectly with pre done music. I think it's a mix and match. I think stuff okay, like the yeah, credit yeah, sequence. Yeah could totally be stock music sure uh you know and end credits can be stock music and and then scenes where she's walking around the house you know obviously you know you can you can have music that has like you know like hit marks you know where you hit like the you know let's say right like i'll do it right now (laughs) whoa (laughs) so loud 
Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, wait for it. It's yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that you know, last ten seconds better than this movie. But you know, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, <laughs> maybe. I mean, you the you looked into it. You went to the to the composer's site. Yeah, he has like hundreds of movies. You know, he's a working composer. Mm-hmm. He didn't credit old man. I that's gar- that's the only thing that I was kind of thinking of is like, well, I mean, this is like a release. I mean, I don't know if it's on Amazon. I mean, you can put anything on Prime <laughs> these days. <laughs> that's the box quote. This is a release. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways. But, you know, a lot of composers, Movie like you think of, like, what would we just, we just watched um, Star Raiders. And that's James Horner. And he repurposed his music as well. Did he actually like sit and watch the movie and do like the John Williams thing when you're, wa- you're watching with like, you know, the film in the background? It's like fully composed. Right. I don't think that's always the case, but I, I think maybe it's like a hybrid of the two of like, you know, here's a bunch of my cues. You know, if you, if you need something kind of tweaked here and there, you know, I wouldn't put it past him that maybe it was something more like that. Right. But he had like a catalog of things like this is my suspense music, you know, this is my dot 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 music, romantic music, totally. you know. Because totally. that's what, as far as what I know of composers uh, that I've known over the years, that's kind of what they do is they just build like a catalog of, um, you know, either what they're interested in or especially if they're going to do like film score stuff is they like to have like a catalog of, of their, uh, they're like their highlight reel. Um, of things that they could possibly just say, okay, well, if you don't want to pay me to build a complete composition for this entire film, this is what I have. Can we work this in and somehow, right. like, you know, cut it together in some way? But I, I still agree. hate this movie. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's, uh, I would be happy if I never saw this freaking cover come over the hat ever again. Um, it's back. I put it back in the hat. Yeah, I know you did. You son of a bitch. I know you did. And there's still a second disc in there. Have we even talked about what else like, is in there? We, we don't not, have to right now. Like Aberdeen County Conjurer? Is that what it says? Yeah, burning. That, yeah. One, that one sounds more yeah. interesting. That one looks more interesting. Burning Dead. And then The Dead Live. Here, yeah. you know, this is I, the best two dollar ninety nine cents you've ever spent. I agree with Josh's two star rating for this movie, but I, I don't think I'd ever watch of, it again. Out of what, like a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of five, this is got, uh, this is this is getting a two. On it's still, I know, it's still a star. Uh, I didn't have honestly. I might make it like a star in th- three quarters. I wish I could do quarter stars because uh, that this is the perfect one and three quarter star movie for me. Um, but I, I I think that my enjoyment of it was helped by watching it with you two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, if I was yeah. watching this by myself at home, I would have turned it off. That's you know, what I said. Ten minutes into yeah. it. Oh, easily. yeah. Easily. Oh, yeah. you'd give it ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be fast forwarding in the first five. <laughs> and I'd be like, going, oh, there's nothing going on. You just see him going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Really, what I was kind of expecting out of this when I think of old man like just like the creepy old man, sure. It more, it's just like the there's the not character a lot of old man in was, the movie. Was no. old, it didn't but matter. I was hoping they would like play yeah. with it. Me, what was that 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 Shyamalan and Imnon movie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That the, had the, the kids and the, stuff the and visit? the grandparents. The visit, yeah, totally. Like I was thinking it'd be something more Agreed. akin to that, and that's right. kind of what I was looking <laughs> you were thinking, forward to. You were you had high hopes for something on depraved degenerates. I'll tell you that much. But you never but know. No, but yeah. you are right because frankly. This had nothing to do with the fact that he was an old man. It was just basically what it felt like was they sat around and thought, well, what's what's a like movie monster that hasn't been done? Oh, how about an, an old man with a noose around his neck? How about that? And it had nothing to do thematically with anything whatsoever. And yeah, I think because, you know, there's something to be said. I think that, I mean, ironically, that's something that Harmony Corinne kind of cashes in with with trash humpers is there's something kind of creepy about like dirty old people you know and there's like there's something innately and i think it's maybe because like we know that we're all going to get old so we fear our you know we fear old age in the way that we fear death right yeah. and, and it didn't have any yeah other. there's there's like there's something psychological to be said for that and this was just like hey here's a mask there's that we yeah, it was like you shocker know? Or something. there's yeah. and there's nothing behind the old man either mm-hmm. they they make a uh, the 
other male character the, that can shine. Right. Uh, he explains at one point the history. Yeah. Where already said it's the sun. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's yeah, the sun. Yeah. Josh already ruined it. All yeah. right. So good. Yeah, you're glad, welcome. Glad, glad I don't have to hold back on that. Right. You're welcome. Uh, Though so, by watching this movie, we would be ruining it for you yeah. if we made yeah. you watch so here, it. So, so here's a here's a gaping gaping plot hole. <laughs> uh, you have you have the the your ex voice of exposition is the dead son, who's explaining what happened to him indirectly, his father, the other victims that were killed in this house, and he makes a point to say, I don't know what made him snap. No one knows why the old man is right. doing these things. Yet the old man kept the diary of everything he was doing, and uh, I would assume that was clearly important to him because the it That's becomes the it spirit, becomes yeah. the Deus Ex Machina, you know, of the movie where he gives his father back his diary, his murder diary, and somehow that re- saves his spirit, and he can float off. That is such, bu- that ending was such bullshit. Uh, yeah, that was bullshit. Like, Genuine the old man, bullshit. that's all he wanted? He wanted his freaking diary? You know what? This is a fucking one and a half star movie yeah. now. <laughs> back, 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 back to one and a half stars. Uh, yeah, no, it makes it makes no goddamn sense. Yeah. None. So we have a killer that has no motive. Right. No motivation. He doesn't even seem to be getting like a thrill out of it, you know, so it's yeah. not like every other serial killer is just well the a house was was laid dormant since 1973 right since the murders no one in the town wanted to buy the house uh this couple bought the house because they got a really obviously they got a really good deal on it smoking deal uh the husband knew the history that there was a murder in there didn't tell his wife so then that's where the conflict begins right. uh but i mean you know uh, other than that, just kind of that, I mean, you saw the, the diary, the kind of these flashback things you saw him writing with a Sharpie, which which was a Sharpie that was post-1973. Oh, yeah, you I saw the, totally thought about the fact know. that that was like not a vintage Sharpie. No, because uh, <laughs> it's had the non-toxic yeah, totally, label on it, totally, and back then, no, totally. they were all toxic. I'm glad you I, noticed I, that as well. Uh, <laughs> So they established his diary, but they didn't give any gravitas toward it. Like, it's not like um, um, uh, scary stories to tell in the dark, where it it was like the um, the the catalyst to bring back um, these gruesome uh, happenings, right? Uh, or to resurrect him there. It's just the fact that somebody was in the house. So it was more like an Amityville horror right. kind yeah, of thing of yeah. like get the fuck out of my house. But he didn't give a he didn't care about that house. It's just that he was his soul was entrapped within the house for whatever reason. Looking for that diary, the- which which would have been a, like if he was clawing at if like some weird scene like he's clawing at the walls right, or something right, right. or like you know she would come into the room and he's like like ripping up the floorboards in some corner here i am rewriting the fucking movie again. hey somebody needs to do that it. like something to like establish like he needs something and and, yeah. and maybe sometimes where you see him not being like just scary or at present but like sad at times yeah like like give the character a little bit more dimension in order to establish that it's not necessarily your fault that you're in this house. Yeah. It's just that I want to get out of here because I've been sitting here for, for what, what is that, like 30 years? Not killing anybody because nobody's <laughs> coming in the house. But he doesn't know what to do because right. that's, I mean, oh my gosh, there's there's these entities, yeah. whatever. What I mean, yeah. shit on this movie. Yeah, shit on it. Also, sound terrible. You could like barely, it's like mumblecore, but like... Uh, like you couldn't understand anything and they i swear to god they didn't have a mic they just used the in camcorder mic on this movie yeah they didn't even bother and it's like you know that's already bad because you're getting a lot of echoey room sound and stuff but then on top of that you've got like people mumbling through half the movie right nobody knows me killed his wife Probably sometime after the first murder. 
yeah, the sound was just yeah. And then awful. somebody puts the receiver of the phone down, and it sounds like a brick fell through <laughs> yeah, the second exactly, story. Well, right. that's when they put like the microphone in between the couch right. cushion, <laughs> right. sort of picks right. stuff up. You know, I've done that. Before. That's a running theme, though. I think on on uh, <laughs> depraved degenerates. Not that I think it's the DVD's fault. I just think that uh, all six movies on here probably have shitty audio. I mean, I'm willing to place it. I'm willing to make that bet. I since, would rather just oh, have dude. ADR for everything. Just like, ta- just like, make, just, Adam's gonna make us watch every goddamn take, movie take, on take here. Take it out so. for like a week or something. Just like, not two of these in two weeks in a row at least. Oh god, if it's is your pick, you, you, is, you a, is Ann picking next or what? <laughs> it would be Ann's turn because I picked last week. I picked Star Raiders. <laughs> Anne's the only one who hasn't picked up from this <laughs> DVD collection, though. It's a good point. So we got good odds uh, next week, hopefully. Anyway, good, you know. You, this, <laughs> Fuck you, movie. So, so now it's down to a half star? What's going on? <laughs> Still one and a half stars. Cultfollowing.co. Oh, cult- <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> it's still hey, it's still better than Love on a Leash. I'm serious. It's still better than Love on a Leash. Oh, I I hated yeah, Love on a Leash. Yeah, I, got, I hated I, that I, movie. I enjoyed yeah. I enjoyed the experience. Yeah, that I, I enjoyed had. the experience of this. It was only an hour and twenty minutes long. There was a couple of moments that actually got under my skin. It wasn't like honestly, movies like whatever, like what was that freaking that dumb bullshit that we watched? Fatal uh, Future? Yeah, that um, Fatal Future, Love on a Leash, like the I just think those they were just they were completely pointless movies. This I felt at least had an atmosphere that got under my skin, and all the acting wasn't completely deplorable. So that's that's what I can say for it. I think I think this is what happens when you give people who can't make movies the tools to make a movie, right? Um, and there's some charm to that, as they opposed need to, to keep it to themselves. As opposed to Live love on a leash family and friends, well, don't distribute it. To I said the same know, thing. Pendulum about Pictures is the ones that need to be freaking, you know, feel sorry here because Adam is they're making all the money. Is I it mean, too late for you to dispute the charges? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy it from Pendulum Pictures. <laughs> from Maybe wherever up, you bought you it, hit from. up PayPal or something, or is it too late? <laughs> it's, it's too late. Oh, <laughs> damn it! It's all too late. It's too late. Always has been. It's too yeah. late. It's too late for us, that's for sure. It's not too late. Too late. Too late. Huh? It's not too late. It's too not too late. late. Too late. Too, too late. late. Too late. It's too late, Alma. It's all too late, Alma. Come here. Yep. Bye.